There are some wonderful thank you gifts, and we're going to talk about those in just a moment. My favorite thing, Dr. Northrup, in this first segment was giving up perfect. Absolutely. It is one of the most important things you can do to realize that your office is going to be messy sometimes, the bathroom needs to be cleaned up. Don't worry about that stuff. I mean, really, at the end of your life, you're not going to look back and say, boy, I wish I'd spent a week cleaning that up. It just won't be like that. Uh, in fact, I'd recommend that you call your women friends because when you work together to give up perfect, then you get support for being a whole human being, not someone who is just a human doing. Oh, I like that's a nice comment. The other thing that I really liked in the first segment was the breastfeeding analogy. Absolutely. Because I think as women, we're so anxious to take everything on our shoulders, and we almost enjoy being a martyr. Oh, I have to do everything. Well, you know, this is you true. Know. There's some, uh, such a thing called negative pleasure, and I, uh, this show is how, how to recognize it so that you can get rid of it. I think one of the things about um, this program, and particularly the wisdom offering, is that this makes a fantastic gift to give to the woman in your life. If you're a guy, you can be a real hero by giving this to the woman in your life. Not to mention that when I get to the fourth section, there's a lot there that men are really going to love. <laughs> they're very yeah, that's really true. The brain changes during this time from uh, AC current to DC current. You get a direct current of wisdom and this is so important to your health and to your intuition and your inner wisdom. It's really very exciting. Well, I think what we're finding out is there's just a lot of wisdom. And if you thought the first segment was good, Coming up next, it's diet and health, and you're going to tell us five absolute ways to lose weight. Absolutely, yeah, and they're simple. Not necessarily easy, but they are simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you something that's very simple to do right now, and that's to become a member of the station. So when you go to the phone and call the numbers on your screen, we have these wonderful thank you gifts that Dr. Northrup has put together for you so that you can call in and know that you're doing something to really affect uh, your life, and we have these wonderful thank you gifts for you to choose from. And you're making sure that wonderful information like Dr. Northrop's program will continue on the air. This is really a sense of, I, I have to say it, it's a sense of bonding in watching this program. There's more to come. You're going to be glad that you stayed with us. Again, the numbers on your screen. And stay with us as we go into now more information on your diet and your health from Dr. Northrop. Okay, part two, menopause food plan, how to balance your hormones and prevent middle age spread. All right, here's the pearl of wisdom from this particular segment. Most menopausal symptoms, including midlife weight gain and all chronic diseases, can be managed with diet and exercise alone. Really? Yeah. Okay, the symptoms of the midlife metabolic shift that so many of you are familiar with is what I learned in Western Canada, they call it the muffin top. Free rather than see you all know what I'm talking about. Okay, the uh, inability to lose weight and all of this, um, and then that sort of change in your body, you know, from the uh, pear to the apple, and your shoulders get a little fat, and you know, say, how did this happen? Or you weigh the same but your shape has changed. Okay, all of this starts years before all of it, but it reaches critical mass at midlife. <laughs> all right. And here's the stuff that happens. There's a rapid change in hormones, and it increases in stress hormones. And the stress hormones are cortisol and adrenaline. And those are from, and those are increased from lack of sleep, fatigue, worry, too little exercise, and too many refined carbohydrates, and that includes alcohol, sorry, wine, all right? Now, almost all degenerative diseases, chronic degenerative diseases, like heart disease, are associated with insulin abuse and glycemic stress. Glycemic refers to glucose in the blood. You've heard of hypoglycemia, right? Okay, that's low blood glucose. Glycemic means the stress on the, in the inside of blood vessels that, ca that is caused from blood sugar being too high. And that literally, blood sugar that's too high, causes what's called oxidative stress or rusting inside the arteries, all right? Also, that's associated, high blood sugar is associated with high insulin levels, and that's a storage hormone that takes sugar out of the blood and stores it as fat. But high insulin levels all the time changes the way hormones are metabolized. That's very, very important. Now I want to give you some symptoms of insulin abuse and glycemic stress, which just means eating too many refined carbs and having too much stress. And they are nighttime eating, 
This is where you have your evening meal, which for me used to start at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in front of the refrigerator when I came home from work. Is that familiar to any of you? Yes. Um, and then I'd have dinner. And then you eat from then on, watching TV, snacks. It's always high-carb snacks, popcorn, potato chips, and so on. And then you finally have your last little gasp of whatever it is just before your head hits the pillow. That's nighttime eating. You're grazing, 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 grazing. Okay. Um, insomnia, inability to sleep, um, heartburn, swelling, what I call liquid pounds. You know, you go out to brunch, you gain five pounds. There's no way you ate enough calories to gain the five pounds. It's the liquid from the uh, insulin creating fluid retention and daytime sleepiness and it all starts with uh, breakfast which we'll get to. Aches and pains are associated with glycemic stress, PMS. Other signs are low HDL cholesterol, low high density lipoprotein. Do you know that my HDL, the good cholesterol, used to be 35 when I was 35 years old? That's really low. That's like right in there, you are genetically programmed for heart disease. You know what it is now? 65. It's like way up in the live forever mode, okay? <laughs> um, high triglycerides are another sign of uh, insulin abuse. High blood sugar. Now, I want to tell you that glycemic stress that you've had in your 20s and 30s becomes insulin resistance and what's called syndrome X. And I want to talk for a minute about Syndrome X because this is what's leading to all the chronic degenerative disease that won't make you a healthy, happy, sexy 100-year-old, okay, which I want you to be. All right. And Syndrome X is increased risk of heart disease and diabetes, an increase, increased risk for breast cancer, hypertension, abnormal cholesterol, obesity, lack of ovulation, increased risk for macular degeneration and cataracts, polycystic ovary, excess facial hair, and adult acne. All those things are just associated with refined carbs and too much insulin. And they're easily reversible. So let me give you my program to balance things, okay? So step one, measure for health. Your waist should be less than 35 inches, okay? You can do that tonight. Go put a tape measure around your waist. If it's 35 inches or above, you probably have syndrome X. Your body mass index, which you can get by Googling BMI, body mass index, it's all over the other internet, should be 24 or below. Now, let me give you what that is. A 5 foot 4 woman who weighs 140 pounds has a body mass index of 24. So you don't have to be twiggy. Those of you with a BMI of 25 to 29, that's like the 20 pounds overweight or so, that is a health risk. We have recent very solid data that shows that carries a 20 to 30 percent greater risk of premature death. A BMI of 30 is considered obese, and that's a huge risk of premature death, two to three times the normal risk. So those are the numbers that you want to shoot for, a waist below 35 and a BMI of 24 or below. Okay? Easy. Now, step two, maintain normal blood sugar and insulin. And I'm going to tell you how you do this. You eat three meals a day. You eat protein at each meal. You cut back on refined carbohydrates. I use the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your food should be good. 20% can be not so good, okay? <laughs> Remember, we're not doing perfect, all right? Um, alcohol and wine are high glycemic foods, all right? Eat low glycemic carbs that raise blood sugar slowly. These should be the bulk of your diet. Beans, vegetables, greens, nuts, seeds, some grains, but one in three women has a gluten intolerance and can't eat grain. Stop it for two weeks, see how you feel, I'll bet your gas, bloating, all that will go away, then you know grain is not so good for you. And by 50, a lot of people have a grain problem. And avoid MSG, monosodium glutamate, that's sometimes sodium glutamate on foods. It makes you want to eat more and more. It's a very good way to make laboratory rats obese very good way to make humans obese. So avoid it. Step three, quell cellular inflammation. High insulin levels and too many refined carbohydrates lead to cellular inf inflammation. Remember, this is the same for men and women. Excess body fat produces excess inflammatory chemicals, and these are at the heart of the degenerative diseases, cancer and heart disease. So first, eliminate trans fats like margarine, you don't need those. Take a good antioxidant, multivitamin, and mineral daily. Most women need additional magnesium. Magnesium is very important for the nerves and anxiety, and we don't get enough of it. Eat lots of fruits and vegetables. We're up to nine a day. Now, here's how you do it. Most of your food should be fruits and vegetables. Meat should be a condiment. It's easy. 
I had three vegetables at lunch today. That's just what you do. Okay, you cook those up and that's what you have and then you have a little protein with it. And by the way, breakfast sets the stage. It anchors your whole day. What you eat for breakfast determines what your blood sugar is going to be the rest of the day. If you're eating the wallpaper off the wall at four in the afternoon, which I used to do, beginning my evening meal in front of the refrigerator, that's because breakfast was a bagel and coffee, which is guaranteed to raise your blood sugar way up here and then plummet it down here, and then you're chasing it the rest of the day. And there's no excuse. There are many shakes and bars that you can just grab and go that contain some protein, some fat, some carbohydrate, okay?